All right, boys and girls, let's get ready and smoke a bowl because we're reviewing the many saints of Newark. Here's the deal, if you haven't already blazed up and seen this movie, or if you don't want any spoilers, then shut this shit down now. All right, let's roll, bitches. I've been waiting a long time for this film, and watching this movie was an event at my house. First, we went and got one of my favorite comedians weed. Joey Diaz, who plays Buddha in the film, is in the top 10 people who influenced my career here in Los Angeles. I'm a fan of his comedy, his podcasts, and him as a person. When I hear his voice, it reminds me of being around my family. So we went over to the ice cream shop dispensary, picked up his strain of laughing gas, which is out of this world, and smoked it till I couldn't feel my face. Then I made some homemade fried chicken cutlet sandwiches with some burrata, hot sweet peppers, and a balsamic drizzle. We paired that bad boy with a charcuterie board that would push your mother's wig back, it was so good. The stage was set and we popped on the movie. Five hours later, here we are. This film was written by David Chase, who wrote the original Soprano series and was also written by Lawrence Connor, who wrote for The Sopranos and Boardwalk Empire. The film was directed by Alan Taylor, who directed Thor The Dark World and Terminator Genesis, which should give you a hint as to how this review is gonna go. I gotta be honest, as an Italian from the East Coast, I didn't like it. But get the fuck out of here. I said what I said. So for this review, I'm gonna touch on the things that I loved, the things that I didn't care for, and the things I would change. Then finally, I'm gonna give it a score. First, let's talk about the stuff that I loved, the acting. The acting across the board was outstanding from everybody. So I'm just gonna touch on a few performances that I really, really enjoyed. Starting with Ray Liotta. He's the fucking man, but I heard he showed up to set and didn't know his lines. I loved how he played his twin brother character so incredibly different. There was also a scene which has the best line of the movie where Ray Liotta's character, Hollywood Dick, is showing off a picture of his new Italian wife and someone comes up and says, oh, who's that? Sophia lots of pizza? It's the best line of the movie. I was dying, I loved it so much. When you look at Ray Liotta when his character says that, you see his facial response to what's exactly going on at that moment. He starts acting before he delivers his next line, which is something only a seasoned professional does. Next up is Vera Farmiga, who plays Tony's mother, Livia, and she did an outstanding job. The original actress, Nancy Marchand, made faces that made you want to slap the absolute shit out of her, and Vera mastered those facial expressions to a T. Next up, Joey Diaz. He did great. This was a big moment for him, and something he was looking forward to doing for a very long time. I'm happy he got to see his dream become a reality. Moving on, we've got Michael Gandolfini. How could I talk about acting and not mention this kid? He stepped into his father's shoes and did a wonderful job. However, the breakout star of this film for me was John Magaro, who played Silvio. What a fucking performance. He mimicked Steven Van Sant so incredibly well, from the walk, to his mannerisms, to his voice and cadence of speech, absolutely phenomenal. The only other thing that I loved was that they were eating gabuzzel in this movie. This dish is an Italian delicacy and one of my favorite. For those of you that don't know what gabuzzel is, it's lamb's head and it's fucking delicious. Okay. Now let's touch on the stuff I didn't like. Starting off, the color palette. It's shitty and looked like a low-level LUT filter you slap on in post-production. If they wanted an older look, then they should have shot this film on 35 or 75 millimeters and on cameras that could mimic the look of the time period. Moving on, the story. It was absolutely flat. There were hints of greatness, but it never got to the finish line. It never got to an acceptable place of where we really wanted it. Pushing forward, the character development. It was pretty much non-existent. For example, you have an amazing actor like John Bernthal essentially making a cameo as Tony's father. This dude went to fucking Russia and trained in high level acting and you have him in a cameo? It's fucking stupid. Next, they didn't use Jersey or Newark as a character in any way, shape or form. The city has a disgusting quality to it and also very much a charm that just wasn't used and should have been in this film. Next, the soundtrack, it sucked. There is amazing music from this era that would help define the time and it just wasn't used. 
Another gripe of mine is Pussy, Silvio, and Pauly. They're like 10 years older than Tony, which makes no friggin' sense because in the show, they are relatively the same age. And my final gripe about this film was that Tony was a bitch just doing hooligan kid shit. And I know you're saying, oh, he's only 10. That doesn't mean shit. Tony was supposed to be a maniac when pushed. That behavior isn't learned. It's inside you from the moment you're born. It's innate. Now, what I would have done to make this film better was this. I would shoot the film to match the color palette of the television show or shoot it so it looked like something that was done in the 60s. I would have had music that spoke to the generation that lived through it and also introduced it to a new generation watching. I would have made the relationship between Dickie Maltasanti and Harold way more intense and had it more of a brother from another mother friendship, which would make his betrayal much stronger and much more interested in his character. I would have decreased the age gap between Tony, Pauly, Silvio, and Pussy. And instead of showing Tony doing bullshit hooligan nonsense, I would have built his character like this. I would have kept him as a little kid. I wouldn't jump to a teenage version in this film. He would be a loving, caring, loyal kid who had tiny tendencies of being dishonest. However, I would have played him as becoming unhinged at a moment's notice, breaking things, cursing, fighting, and showing how violent he could be if provoked or even if you looked at him crooked. I would have shown his bipolar snaps as a child and how Dickie was the only person who could control him and show him the right path. I would have made the relationship between Tony and Dickie so strong that when Dickie dies, you really see the hurt and pain in Tony that forces the change inside of him. We got glimpses of all these things, but we really just needed much, much more of it. I would then make a second movie about Tony as a teenager, starting down his dark path and becoming the Tony we all know and love. I would also make a spin-off show about Harold's character running his own crew during the 60s. At the time of this filming, the reviews sit like this. On Rotten Tomatoes, this movie has a 75%. A 6.6 .6 on IMDb, and Metacritic has it at a 61%. Now I'm gonna hit this bad boy with a high movie review of 6.5. I'm honestly not sure if I would see this movie more than twice. Uh, I'm a big fan of The Sopranos, and that's saying a lot. I'm hoping they give us more. I've heard rumblings that this is gonna be part of a trilogy, but nothing's been confirmed. I'd love to give this team a chance at redemption. As always, thanks for listening. Please do me a favor and like and share this video. Subscribe to this channel for everything Absurd Reality by clicking the link in the bottom right corner of your screen. That's it for this review, guys. We are out.